uh, a very good evening to students uh, this particular topic that i'm talking about in next 30 minutes is about pulmonary function test we will be discussing solely on static lung volumes and capacities uh, what I'll be doing is at the end of this lecture, you should be able to know the definition and the normal values of lung volumes and the capacities. So we are going to discuss them in details and uh, we'll also understand on the basis of image, these volumes and capacities. Uh, before you learn any further, let's understand a little history about uh, uh, pulmonary function test. The first one is uh, Borelli. He was one of the earliest on respiratory physiology and the measurements in respiratory functions way back in 1679. In early 1800s, we had Humphrey Davy with the help of mercurial air holding machine and helium dilution technique measure his own residual volume. And in recent times, we all are aware of the spirometer that we are using in our practicals, which is made up of Hutchinson's spirometer. So Hutchinson's was in the very recent times studied the capacities of lung and the respiratory functions. This is the famous uh, Hutchinson's spirometer, which is used for measurement of lung volumes and uh, capacities. So with that short history about pulmonary function test, let's understand the various lung volumes and capacities. Now, today we are going to discuss only on the static part. Static part means at any given stage. Time factor is not involved. Most of the measurements are in milliliters or liters and there are four volumes which are measured and combinations of these volumes will give you capacities. Okay? Dynamic I am not discussing now. So for now, just concentrate on static lung volumes and capacities. So I will give you the full forms. Residual volume, RV. Expiratory reserve volume, ERV. Tidal volume, TV. And inspiratory reserve volume, IRV. Combinations of these are called capacities. Where we have four capacities. We have total lung capacity, vital capacity, inspiratory capacity and functional residual capacity. So this is a diagram which will help you understand what is the spirometric diagram and the static lung volume and capacities. Instead of putting it over here, what I will be doing is I will be using a separate slide and explain you on that slide various lung volumes and capacities fine so if i consider so suppose if i consider Okay, so now if you consider this entire thing as volume, so I'll put it as 0 to 6 liters. This is your volume. And now I'll be discussing various capacities and volumes. So first is we have volumes, 4 volumes, tidal volume. Tidal volume is the volume of the air that the person is normally inspiring or expiring. So, this becomes the tidal volume, which is approximately 500 ml. So, the normal amount of the air that the person is inspiring or expiring in the normal respiration is tidal volume. Obviously, the values will differ in males and females and there is a range between 350 to 500 ml. Now, Okay, so now 
if you ask the person to inspire over and above normal inspiration so that means the person has inspired and here you ask the person to take deep inspirations so this entire volume that the person inhales over and above normal inspiration is called as inspiratory reserve volume which is roughly 3000 ml so this becomes 500 ml and this becomes 3000 ml when you ask a person to expire forcefully and deeply over and above normal expiration becomes his expiratory reserve volume which is roughly 1100 ml so tidal volume ho gaya, inspiratory reserve volume ho gaya, which is around 3000 ml then we have expiratory reserve volume which is a volume of the air that can be expelled out forcefully and deeply after normal expiration and then we have something called as residual volume which is a volume of air that remains in the lung after forceful expiration so this becomes residual volume which is roughly around 1200 ml so these are your volumes I'll quickly revise them Tidal volume is a volume of the air that the person is inspiring or expiring in normal respiration. Normal value is between 350 to 500 ml. Volume of the air that the person is breathing over and above normal inspiration becomes inspiratory reserve volume which is around 3000 ml. Volume of the air that the person is expiring forcefully and deeply over and above normal expiration becomes expiratory reserve volume which is roughly 1100 ml or 1.1 liter and then we have the residual volume which is a volume of the air that remains inside the lung even after forceful expiration this is around 1200 ml now so residual volume in aapko bata 1200 ml now combinations of this gives you capacities so let's discuss the first one inspiratory capacity for inspiratory capacity i'll use another one inspiratory capacity is this that is irv plus tidal volume which becomes 3500 ml okay so this is the inspiratory reserve volume then we have something called as functional residual volume functional residual volume is the volume of the air that remains in the lung after normal expiration so if you remember and if you see this diagram carefully functional residual capacity which is a combination of erv plus rv which is approximately 2300 ml this is the amount of the air that remains inside the lung at any given stage and which cannot be expelled out and this is a point from where the lung starts inhaling and exhaling so this becomes the baseline or equilibrium point where the lung starts working okay so ye ho gaya aapka inspiratory capacity functional residual capacity then we have vital capacity vital capacity is this entire thing so vital capacity is irv plus tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume which is approximately 4800 ml And finally, we have total lung capacity, which is combination of vital capacity plus residual volume, which becomes around 6 liters. So these are your four volumes and four capacities. So you can go through this diagram again and I'll quickly show you all these volumes and capacities again so we have tidal volume 
roughly 500 ml ranging from 350 ml to 500 ml in males and females it also depends on the uh, height the weight of an individual we are going to discuss that in details then we have inspirator reserve volume which is almost 3.5 uh, 3 to 3.5 liters expirator reserve volume which is a volume of the air that is expelled out forcefully and deeply after normal expiration which is 1.2 liters and the volume of the air that remains in the lung in spite of forceful expiration is residual volume which is again 1.2 liters combination of these two volumes beca becomes frc the dysfunctional residual capacity over and above which the lung is working or the diaphragm contraction brings in 500 ml of fresh air combination of irv plus tidal volume will give you inspiratory capacity which is roughly 3.5 liters combination of inspiratory capacity and expiratory reserve volume will give you vital capacity and combination of vital capacity along with residual volume will give you what is called as total lung capacity all these values are for a average male weighing 70 kg between 20 to 30 years of age with a surface area of 1.7 square meters so i'll quickly again revise the whole thing volume of the air that is expired or inspired during normal quiet breathing is tidal volume males 500 ml females roughly 350 to 500 ml inspiratory reserve capacity volume is a maximum volume of the air that can be inhaled after normal tidal inspiration again in males and females the value can range from 1900 ml to 3300 ml expiratory reserve volume is a maximum volume of the air that can be expired after a normal tidal expiration the values may range from 700 ml to 1100 ml in females and males respectively residual volume is a volume of the air that remains in the lung after maximum expiration the value ranges from 1000 to 1200 ml in males and females inspiratory capacity is the maximum amount of the air which can be inspired after completing tidal expiration so here this is your inspiratory capacity to aapne person ko exhale karne ke liye bola aur uske baad wo normal inspire karke deep inspirations le raha so this entire amount becomes his inspiratory capacity given by the formula irv plus tv which is approximately uh, 3800 ml in males and 2400 ml in females functional residual capacity a uh, volume of the air that remains in the lung at the end of tidal expiration given by the formula expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume and the value ranges from 2200 ml to 18000 ml in males and females if you see this diagram carefully this forms a baseline over and above which the lungs are working in order to take 500 ml of tidal volume we are going to discuss vital capacity and functional residual capacity in details vital capacity a maximum volume of the air that can be exhaled from the lung after maximum inspiration vital capacity is inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume and it ranges from 4800 ml to 3100 ml in males and females this is what we have already discussed so this is the definition and the value of all the four lung volumes and the combinations of those volumes in the form of capacities uh since we have already discussed it i'm not going into details of this and i'll quickly go to variations that are happening in the vital capacity as i have already told you height weight and the surface area affects the vital capacity more the height of an individual more will be the vital capacity as the person ages the vital capacity is reducing because of the inability of the the respiratory chest wall to expand the diaphragm muscle activity is reduced if you consider gender males have more vital capacity as compared to females and if you consider the next important factor that is posture 
uh, obviously in the supine position it is less because the diaphragm is more dome shaped and it will reduce the entire vital capacity of the individual as compared to sitting and standing position where the diaphragm is a little lower we have already discussed these factors but i'll again go into some more uh, factors for example physical dimension size and physical variations males may vital capacity is more we have discussed the effect of age uh, another important point is in athletes also there are variations in vital capacity. If you see swimmers and divers, they have uh, better respiratory muscle strength as compared to normal athletes and hence the vital capacity in these individuals who are trained swimmers and divers are more as compared to a normal athlete person. Posture we have already uh, discussed that is standing position may more as compared to sitting and the least is in lying down position. The next important factor in physiological condition which affects vital capacity is the pregnancy. As we all know the growing uterus um, decreases the size of the thoracic cage which results into decrease in vital capacity. There are multiple pathological conditions which may affect the vital capacity which includes obstructive and restrictive lung diseases, cardiac failure, pleural effusion and ascites. So if you have uh, noticed the whole graph carefully, you must have understood that the residual volume is a volume of the air that remains inside the lung throughout. Uh, it cannot be expelled out. So obviously because it cannot be expelled out, it cannot be measured by spirometer. Hence, residual volume ke liye we have two different parameters for measurement. One is the helium dilution method and the other one is nitrogen washout method. Second important point that you have to note over here is if you consider the ratio of residual volume is to total lung capacity. That means around 1.2 liters is to 6.8 liters. The ratio should be less than 0 0.25. So please remember these small small um, numericals because uh, this is what they ask you in MCQs. Again, if we see residual volume is to total lung capacity, this particular ratio is grossly increased in obstructive lung diseases as compared to restrictive lung diseases. Come to the next important factor that is the functional residual capacity. As you are already aware, functional residual capacity is a volume of the air that remains inside the lung after normal tidal expiration. This quantity of the air which remains in the lung after normal tidal expiration is almost 2300 ml. Now the question is why should you have almost 2300 ml of air constantly in your lung? As you have seen in the diagram, it acts as an equilibrium over and above which the lungs are working. The first and the most important point that you have to understand for the functional residual capacity is that having 2300 ml of air inside the lung continuously provides the gas for gaseous exchange. Hence, uh, the variation in the partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide is put to minimum. Second important point that you have to remember is presence of the gas or the air inside the lung will prevent the collapse of the alveoli. Uh, because there is no collapse of the air or the alveoli, obviously, uh, the alveoli will be inflated and less effort will be put to reinflate the alveoli. So the second point is to prevent the collapse of the alveoli. And the third important factor is since you have noticed that it's the, it's the level at which the lungs are working. Imagine if the lungs were not having that much amount of the air. In that case, the diaphragm would have been contracting much more to take up a large amount of air. In normal conditions, when the person has 2300 ml of air inside the lung, the diaphragm is contracting only by 1 cm and that 1 cm descent of diaphragm is good enough to cause 500 ml of tidal volume of fresh air every breath. Because of presence of functional residual capacity, this particular work of breathing is drastically reduced and the entire effort of the lung thoracic chest wall is to take up only 500 ml of tidal volume. So all these are the importance of functional residual capacity. We will understand what are the factors which are affecting the functional residual capacity. The most important is body size. FRC is directly proportional to the height. What is the, what is the um, analog? Almost 
Females have approximately 90% of the male FRC. Obviously, it is related to the height of the individual. With age, there is no such correlation. If you remember when we were doing the vital capacity, this particular correlation is drastically seen in case of uh, vital capacity. Next important point, as I have already told you, is the diaphragmatic muscle which contracts and which causes the inhalation of tidal volume. So, FRC is believed to be an equilibrium for the lung chest wall system. Diaphragmatic tone maintains the FRC. Hence, whenever there is anesthesia, because of the loss of the tone of the diaphragm, it reduces the functional residual capacity. Next important point, posture. And if you remember when we did vital capacity and we understood that the posture does decrease the vital capacity and obviously it will affect the functional residual capacity, it reduces and the reduction is almost 0 0.5 to 1 liter. In certain lung diseases, for example, in uh, obstructive lung disease especially, loss of the lung elastic recoil with emphysema will increase the functional residual capacity. Here what happens is there is a destruction of the alveoli and the bronchioles. So they uh, tend to lose their capacity of the recoil. Hence, the capacity to hold on more air is increased in obstructive lung diseases. Second important point in obstructive lung diseases is there is obstruction in the air flow outside. So, what is happening is air is getting trapped into the alveoli which increases the FRC. On the other hand, increased in Expiratory resistance with asthma and external apparatus will also increase FRC. Chest wall, increased abdominal content will decrease FRC as the one which I have already told you which happens in pregnancy and in cases of uh, lying down position. And finally, we have alveolar ambient pressure gradient where positive end expiratory pressure increases the FRC. Now, when we were discussing all these things, let me just tell you one important point that is happening in the obstructive and the restrictive lung diseases. I'll have a separate uh, discussion on the flow volume loops and the time volume capacities when we are doing this pulmonary function test part 2. But here I'll explain you one important point and that is what happens during obstructive lung diseases and in restrictive lung diseases. So if you consider this is your normal patient or normal subject. If you consider the patient with white of with obstructive lung diseases, then the point that you have to note is so consider this as a person with obstructive lung diseases. So in obstructive lung diseases, what happens is The tidal volume remains the same, that is 500 ml, but the inspiratory reserve volume is reducing. What is increasing is the expiratory reserve volume and the residual volume. This increases, this increases, this remains normal and this is decreased. So, if you see... The functional residual capacity is increasing in obstructive lung diseases. And the vital capacity is more or less remaining the same. I'll show it over here. More or less remains the same. So what is increased is expiratory reserve volume residual volume, functional residual capacity in obstructive lung diseases. Now come to what happens in restrictive lung diseases. I'll show you with this particular color. Now in restrictive lung diseases, I'll show you the same diagram, but I'll show it here. Consider the same graph 
and in the restrictive lung diseases the problem is there is restriction so imagine this much amount of the lung is not taking part in the respiration so what happens is the tidal volume remains the same almost normal inspiratory reserve volume is drastically reduced also your expiratory reserve volume is reduced and the residual volume is reduced so entire thing gets shifted down so if you consider your frc is reduced your inspiratory capacity is reduced so this is what is seen in restrictive lung diseases i'll give you quickly examples of obstructive lung diseases most common obstructive lung diseases as you all are aware is asthma emphysema chronic bronchitis restrictive lung diseases may you can have uh, parenchymal diseases like pneumoconiosis sarcoidosis or you can have an extra pulmonary uh, cause in which there could be a neuromuscular uh, disorder like myasthenia gravis kyphoscoliosis fibrosis of the lung which is a intrapulmonary condition there could be a tumor in all these conditions the entire vital lung which is functioning is reduced and hence it causes a reduction in the total lung volume and capacities so i hope i have made the basic points regarding static lung volume and capacities clear for you all and i have also differentiated between obstructive and restrictive lung diseases the static volume and capacities i have discussed the vital capacity ke factors and uh, forced uh, sorry functional residual capacity ke factors so with this uh, i am stopping the discussion on static lung volumes and capacities we will meet again for discussing dynamic lung volumes and capacities and there we'll be discussing the flow volume curve and the time vitam vital curves this particular topic is very very essential and there are a lot of questions which are asked on uh, the calculations and the uh, factors which are affecting the vital capacities and the uh, functional residual capacity one more important point regarding functional residual capacity that i have to mention is that the intra alveolar and the extra alveolar uh, pulmonary vessels ka resistance is minimum during functional residual capacity uh, i was just going through some of the questions in mcq so i have gathered a lot of uh, answers so most of them i have already discussed in this particular presentation and uh, i hope the topic is clear with you all and we'll meet again thank you